Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today, we will be reading The Real Bazaar. All you other Bazaars are just in beginning, so won't the real Bazaar please stand up? Yes, I just made that joke because I'm hilarious. This is the first in a... Ten part series. At least the game says it's a ten part series. My iPhone. My, my, it's not an iPhone. What are you talking about? My app <laughs> that tells me. Uh, my app that has all the books of uh, all the Elder Scrolls games says that it's an eleven part series. The wiki that I use for most of my information tells me that it's somewhere between ten and twelve. Uh, apparently the other games are numbered differently and like this this particular book has parts one and two together I think but there is a part two so anyway the real bizarre hmm you should also read the other one uh we'll read that later but I mean this is a long series so this is going to take a while to get through. Mm. Fair enough. 500 years ago in Mornhold, City of Gems, there lived a blind win widow woman and her only child, a strapping young man. He was a miner, as was his father before him, a common laborer in the king's mines. For his magical ability, ability was but small, the work was... Oh, that, that, that was the end. Right, his magic ability was small. That's why he was a laborer. Sorry. The work was honorable, but poorly paid. His mother made and sold small Wildenberry cakes in the market to help... Eck? That's right, that's correct. Eck out their living. Yeah, sure. They did well enough. His mother s Oh, yeah. They did well enough, his mother said. They had enough to fill their bellies. No one could... No one could wear more than one suit of clothing at a time. What? And when it rained... Uh... Symmachus would have liked more. I'm confused. Sorry, what? Can we, can we read that again? They did well enough, his mother said. They had enough to fill their bellies. No one could wear. No one could wear more than one suit of clothing at a time. And the roof. Oh, and the roof only leaked when it rained. Okay, so they had enough to fill their bellies. That's positive. No one can wear more than one set of clothing at a time. Well, that's... Is that a positive or negative? I guess that's a neutral. Yeah, I guess these are all positives. You can only wear one suit of clothing at a time anyway. Well, that's your me. I can wear... What do you wear? You can wear the Khajiit suit. You can wear the gold thing. You can wear the suit of armor. You can wear a cloak over the top of it. Oh, and you can wear the, the, the dress. The robes that you never actually wear. Oh, I forgot that I wanted to try that out. Yeah, whatever. So how many, like, suits of clothing is that? Uh, well, technically... Uh, one, two, three, four, I guess? Five if you count the, uh, the cape, which I guess... We, Probably can't. Where were we? Sorry. Symmachus would have liked more. What? Is that a comma? That's a full stop. What do you mean Symmachus would have liked more? Anyway. He hoped for a lucky strike in the mines. Oh, Symmachus is the... Thanks you for introducing the main character in the story, by the way. Can you hurry up? Otherwise we're never going to get this fucking shit finished. That's true. 
He hoped for a lucky strike in the mines, which would garner him a large bonus. In his free hours, he enjoyed hoisting a glass of ale in the tavern with his friends and gambling with them at cards, and he drew the eyes and sighs of more than one pretty elven girl. And he drew... No, said that already. Although none held his interest for long. In short, Sam... i got to figure out how to say this name. Samankius. Good enough. Samankius was a typical young dark elf man. Remarkable only for his size. It was rumoured that he had a bit of Nord blood in him. Oh, that's loud. Uh, why is this so loud? Did you turn the... Hold on. Oh, that should be nothing. But it still makes noise. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, get back in here, freaking inventory. God, which, which book was it? Real Bizarre Part, not, not three, not part two, part one. It doesn't say it, part one. Shut up. Should I check what that sounds like? Because that sounds fucking hideous. So I change, how many pages is this thing? I'm gonna not. You know, we're just gonna have to suck it up. Alright. For this for this book, but I'm gonna check before I record any other books. Cause that sounds weird for me. Maybe it's not even like audible. If so, probably the the music is probably even aud inaudible. I did turn it down because I wanted to keep it. Just how many pages? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. There's a weird noise, whatever the fuck that is. It's fine, you're only gonna hear it like, well, apart from what I just did. <laughs> which, if your ears aren't bleeding, then I guess it's okay. Because you, you should only hear it a couple times. Like, eight, or eight or less than ten times to me. It's Zemeckius' 30th, 30th year. Here were, there was great rejoicing in Mordhall. For a girl child was born to their lord and his queen, and his lady. A queen, the people sang. A queen is born for us. All among the people of Mordhold, the birth of a female heir is a sure sign of peace and prosperity to come. Get back to your voice. When the time came for the royal child's right of naming, the mines were closed and Symmachus rushed home to bathe and dress in his best. I'll come straight home and tell you about it, he promised his mother, who was not to attend. She had been ailing. Besides, there would be a great crush of people as all Mornholm would be there. And being blind, she would be unable to see anything anyway. My son, she said, ere you go, fetch me a priest or here now. Else I may pass from my mortal pla for the mortal plane ere you return. Smachius crossed to her bed at once and noted anxiety that her head was very hot and her breathing shallow. He pried. That's right. He pried up the loose floorboard where their small hoard of savings was kept. There wasn't nearly enough to pay a priest or healing. He would have to give what they had and owe the rest. Zemeckius snatched up his coat, cloak and rushed away. The streets were full of flo folk hurrying to the sacred grove. But the mage guild and the temples were locked and barred. Closed for the ceremony, read the signs. Zemeckius elbowed his way through the crowd and managed to overtake a brown-robed monk. After the right, brother, the monk said, if you have gold, I shall gladly to attend your mother. My lord has bade all clerks to attend, and I shall not offend him. 
my mother is desperately ill, Symmachus pled. Surely, my lord, will not, surely my lord will not miss just one lonely monk. Oh, the lonely monk. My father, I'm at well, the monk said nervously, tearing his robe, tearing his, wait. Damn it, I hate when this happens. Where does it say it? Where, where, where? Yeah, okay, there's, there's more, there's more that it says, okay. Uh, the, f the father abbot will, the monk said nervously, tearing his robe loose of the Symmachus's grip and vanishing into the crowd. God, it really annoys me how it does it. Symmachus tried other monks and mages too, but with no better result. Armored guards came through the street and pushed him aside with their lances. And Symmachus realized that the royal procession was approaching. As the royal carriage drew abreast, Symmachus rushed out from the crowd and shouted, My lord, my mother's dying! I forbid her to do so on this glorious night! The lord shouted, laughing and scattering coin in on into the throng. Symmachus was close enough to smell wine on the royal breath. On the other side of the carriage, his lady clutched her babe to her breast and stared wide-eyed at Symmachus. Her nostrils flared in disdain. Guards! she cried. Remove this oaf! Rough hand seized Symmachus. He was beaten and left dazed by the side of the road. Symmachus, head aching, followed in the wake of the crowd and watched the rite of naming from the top of the hill. He could see the brown-robed clerks and blue-robed mages gathering near the royal folk far below. How do you actually say her name? But it's Berenzia. Is that right? Yeah, Berenzia. The name came dim to Smackers' ears as the high priest lifted the naked babe and showed her to the twin moons on either side of the horizon. Jo Joan rising, Joad sitting. Oh, I'm an idiot. Joan and Joad are the, the name of the moons. Oh, I see. One's going up, one's going down. Makes sense. Behold! The Lady Berenzia, born to the rule, born to the rule of Morwind. Grant her thy blessing and thy counsel over that she rule to Morn, Morn holds well. Blessings, blessings, all the people murmured, with their lord and lady, hands upraised. Only Symmachus stood silent, head bowed, knowing in his heart that his dear mother was gone. Oh, that's rough. And in his silence he swore a mighty oath that he should be his lord's bane and in vengeance for his mother's needless death, the child Berenzia, he would have as his own bride that his mother's grandchildren shall be born to rule Mordhold. After the ceremony, he watched impassively as the royal procession returned to the palace, he saw the monk to whom he'd spoken first. The man came gladly enough, now in return for the gold. Symmachus had... Um, for the gold, Symmachus had, and I promise some more later. They found his mother dead, as he had feared. The monk sighed and tucked the bag away. I'm sorry, brother. Well, you can forget the rest of the gold as there's no one I can do here, likely. Give me back my gold, Symmachus snarled. You've done naught to earn it. He lifted his right arm threateningly. The priest backed away, be beginning a curse. But Symmachus struck him before more than three words had left his mouth. He went down heavily, striking his head sharply on one of the stones that formed the fire pit. He died instantly. Symmachus took the gold back and fled the city, muttering the name Berenzia. Now, I think this is where part one actually ends. 
but we're going to move on to the next part. The child Berenzio stood on the upper balcony of the palace, staring down into the courtyard where soldiers milled. Splendid in their armor, present presentingly they formed into ordered ranks, and cheered as her parents, the lord and lady, emerged from the palace, clad head to toe in ebony armor. Mm, styling and profiling. Long purple dyed, dyed fur cloaks, cloaks flowing behind. Really? Ebony armor and purple cloaks? That's a bit much. Splendidly, splendidly comparisoned, shining black horses were brought for them, and they mounted and rode to the courtyard gates and turned to salute her. Berenzia, they cried. Berenzia, farewell. The little girl blinked back to tears and waved bravely with one hand, her favorite stuffed toy animal, a gray wolf cub. She called Woofen. Oh, really? Come on now. That's an okay name. So at least it's not Wolfie. Sure. Clutched to her breast with the other. She had never been parted from her parents before and had no idea what it meant, save that there was war in the West and the names T Tiber Septim and Symmachrius were on everyone's lips, spoken with hate and dread. Wait, why Symmachrius? Did I, did I miss something? Did something happen where Symmachrius suddenly became famous? Miranzio, the soldiers cried, lifting their lances and swords and bows. Then her dear parents turned and rode away, soldiers trailing in their wake until the palace was near emptied. Some time after came a day when Berenzio was shaken. Oh, God damn it. Hang on. What's this be in the next page? You're right, it is. Oh, I've got to load the next fucking book now. Hang on, I got this. Yeah. Uh, Berenzio. Uh, palace was empty. Palace was empty. Palace was empty. Okay. Some time after came a day when Berenzia was shaken awake by her nurse. Oh, that was it. Dressed hurriedly... I hate it when that happens. Dressed hurriedly and carried from the palace. All she remembered of that dreadful time was seeing a huge shadow with burning eyes that filled the sky. She was passed from hand to hand. Foreign soldiers appeared. Her nurse vanished and was replaced by strangers. Some more strange than others. There were days, or was it weeks, of travel. One morning, she woke to step from the coach into a cold place with a large grey stone house set amid endless empty grey, green, and hills patchily covered with grey, white snow. There's a lot of, there's a lot of colours in the sentence. Yes, it did. She clutched Wolfen to her breast with both hands and stood blinking and shivering in the grey dawn. Another fucking colour. Just... And there's another one later. Feeling very small and very black in all this endless space. Grey-white space. Huh. Okay. Uh, a large grey-white woman. What the hell does grey-white mean? You know, not grey, not white, somewhere in the middle. Was staring at her with dreadful, bright blue eyes. She's very black, isn't she? Racist. The woman remarked to her companion, a brown-skinned, brown-haired woman named Hannah, who had been travelling with Berenzio for several days. I've never seen a dark elf before. I don't know much about them myself, Hannah said. This one's got red hair and a temper to match. You can tell that. Take care. She bites and worse. I'll soon train her out of that. The other woman sniffed. What's that filthy thing she's got? Ah! The woman snatched Wolfen away and cast him into the fire blazing in the hearth. Aww. Brenzia shrieked 
and would have flung herself into the fire after him, but was forcibly restrained, despite her attempts to bite and claw her oppressors, while poor Wolfen was reduced to a little heap of charred ash. So that was The Real Berenzia, in some accounts, part one and two, but in our accounts, part one, by Plenteous Meadow. Now, I just have one question. There seems to be a huge time gap between here and there. Right? What the fuck just happened? That's weird. It feels like there should be a book in the middle there. Somewhere. Like there's another book missing. Because how did we go... Wait, well actually, the real question is... Because she's on the palace... Oh, now I know what's going on. I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, so, basically, at the beginning of the this, this second part of the story, she was given to, uh, I think it was... Because Bernsia is currently in... Uh, Wayrest? Shit, I forgot. Wayrest. We talked to her before. We did We did a fucking quest for her, remember? Oh, that's true. Wait, I don't know if this is actually going to come out this week, or if it's going to come out in some way in the future. So, don't, don't date this fucking recording. Um, uh, so, yes. Because she was given... I forget the reasons why, but she was given to... She was married off to someone. Maybe Symmachrius. And, I guess, the family, the new family are a bit bit racist, I guess. Sure. Alright. Well, that has been The Real Berenzia Part 1. Hyphen brackets. Part 2. Plus Part 2. Uh, when we go back, we will probably... Well, you know what? Who knows what's going to happen? But sometime in the future, maybe tomorrow, maybe in the future, we will get The, uh, the Real Berenzia Part 2. But, until then, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.